Hi, this is John Carney, Product Engineer at Cadence, and this is a how-to video for setting up return path constraints. To begin, go into the Constraint Manager. In the Constraint Manager, go into the Electrical Workbook under Return Path. The best thing you're going to want to do is create an electrical constraint set. Creating constraint sets makes assigning rules to your nets easy because once you create the rule set, you can assign it to multiple nets in the design. And then if you ever need to change the rule, you just change the rule definition and then all the assignments will update. There are a couple different rule values for each return path. The first is the reference net. This is typically a ground net, but it can be any net that you want. The second is the reference layer. This is basically specifying that if you have a net on one layer, what other layer should the tool look for to find its reference net? This can be done in a couple different ways. You can specify the closest plane, or you can specify dual plane, which would mean it's going to want to have a reference on a layer above and below. Closest plane is just going to look to find the closest plane layer that has this reference net specified here or you can specify a table if you want to get really explicit for example and specify that if you have a net on the top layer then or if you have a net let's say on layer two signal what layer do you want to look for its return path on if you have a net on layer four signal do you want to look for its return path on layer five or on layer two you can explicitly specify that using this table based form here for this example, I'm just going to choose closest plane. These others, length ignore, max pad gap, max stitch via distance, and adjacent void, I'm going to switch to a PowerPoint and walk through those. Return path length ignore specifies how long a signal can go without having a return path before the system produces a DRC violation. So if you have this signal here that's going along and all of a sudden it loses its return path, what is this distance? before you get a DRC. The values check once the trace center line crosses the opening in the reference plane. Return path pad gap is similar to length ignore, but this is specific to pad escapes. So for example, through hole connectors, you're always gonna have some position of that route segment that doesn't have a return path because of the through hole pin. So with this check, you can specify what that distance is or what that acceptable distance is. Return path stitching via distance checks to ensure that you have a return path via within a certain distance of the reference signal anytime that reference signal changes layers. So if the reference signal has a via here, this will ensure that you have a return path via within this window. Return path adjacent void spacing ensures that if you have a signal that does have a solid return path, you may not want to have that running adjacent to a void for a certain distance greater than a certain distance because sometimes in the fabrication, this void may shift a little bit. Therefore, it's behaving as if it was routed over the void in the first place. This will supersede any length ignore pad gap rules. Once you've created this constraint set, the next step is to go into the net workbook and assign that constraint set to the different nets in the design. For example, you can assign that constraint set to these three buses in the design. Assigning the constraint set will immediately check any DRCs that are enabled. And then you get a check showing you any of the violations of that return path DRC. Void crossing, pad gap, missing stitch vias. You can then select these things and cross probe to the design to find them. These DRCs are real time and will always be checking your design while you're working on it. For example, if you were to slide this trace over and drop it there, you can see you immediately got a return path DRC. If you were to turn on the ground layer, you can see there's clearly a cutout in this ground layer, so you have violated its return path. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video helps you get your PCB done.